Hi guys, welcome back to The Social Tune, and today I'll be reviewing the latest release from the Dropkick Murphys, 11 Short Stories of Pain and Glory. This is going to be a tricky review. While the Dropkick Murphys have had very little mainstream success over their long career, the fact does still remain that they've been around since 1996. And I'll be blunt and say that before I decided to check out this album, I knew very little about them. What I do know is that they're an American band who practice one of my favourite genres, Celtic music, specifically punk and folk. And because I love this sound so much, there's very little you can do to spoil it for me. And while I was nervous going in, I was hoping that they would deliver something that was at least enjoyable. After all, at least an album called 11 Short Stories of Pain and Glory was 11 tracks long. Take notes, Charlie Pooh. What I got was pretty much exactly what I expected. A defiantly solid record with a traditional sound which hasn't changed much over the past two decades. And as I expected, even though I can't say it's a classic or that it'll be one of my best albums of the year, I found this really enjoyable. And the big reason for that is the production on this album. The fact that we're playing in a very traditional mold here, the instrumentation is all organic, which is one of the things I love most about Celtic music. And there really isn't an instrumental I dislike on this album. Guitars, drums, and especially bagpipes bring a ton of flavour to the instrumentation on a lot of these songs. Heck, the only melodies I didn't really love were on Sandlot and You'll Never Walk Alone. And they certainly weren't bad instrumentals. Other than that, even on the songs I didn't like that much, the instrumentation is great. The opener, The Lonesome Boatman, is fantastic, despite it basically being a two and a half minute instrumental track. Then you get the fast paced guitars and the incredibly catchy chorus on Rebels with a Cause. But if you want the sound I love, look no further than I Had a Hat, which is even more fast paced and could easily be the theme to a bar fight. It's insanely fun. Then you have Kick to the Curb with its great guitar solo, and 41513 with its flutes and what I think is a ukulele. Even on songs like Blood and First Class Loser, where I'm not really wild about the lyrics, the instrumentation is great, especially the bagpipes on the former. But then again, instrumental pandering will only get you so far with me, so let's talk about the vocals. I'm a drinker, I'm a thinker, I'm a hero, I'm a zero, I'm a bigger, I'm a boss, I'm a chief. Like I said, this album really isn't breaking any new ground. This is basically pub rock, lyrics and all. The delivery is a tad meat-headed, but it has some tongue-in-cheek moments. I appreciated the spoken word pieces on First Class Loser, or the unabashed sing-along choruses on You'll Never Walk Alone and The Closer Until Next Time. And you're not going to get any fantastic vocal performances here, it's not really the right genre for that, but they do a solid job here. And on most of these tracks, they have more than one singer singing either in unison or opposite each other, which definitely adds some flavour to these tracks. In many ways, it's no different from the Dropkick Murphys past releases. Although, to be honest, if you let a lot of people listen to this, in terms of its sound, it's much closer to Celtic rock than punk or folk. Until you take a look at the lyrics. So come on, Sally! What you gonna do? Break my heart and leave me! For another fool! Despite what this album title says, there's very little pain to this project. In fact, the biggest example of them fighting the system in any way is on Blood, which is bound to be one of the silliest, hammiest, and most over-the-top songs released this year. Rebels with the Cause would be more of a punk song if all the stories described in it didn't take place in the past and had no relation to the present. It just sounds like old men complaining about how much better they had it back in their day, while so much of the best of punk music was focused on the present. Although I'm personally quite glad not to hear yet another overly political album about how screwed America is nowadays. But even those complaints about the past are contradicted two songs later on Sandlot, where they're talking about how great everything was back in their day. There really isn't much of a thematic through line to this album to be honest. 
First Class Loser is a song about an old bully getting his just desserts and our protagonist saying he wouldn't be sad if he died. And while a part of me doesn't condone violence, another part of me loves when people get their comeuppance from the underground. Even if the chorus on that song is a little stilted. Then you have Paying My Way, which is probably the most generic track on this album, but then again I like the sound so I can't really complain. Even if it is a bit underwritten. Again, easily one of the best songs on this album, probably the best, is the riotous fun, fast-paced song about a bar fight, I had a hat. It's so energetic and detailed in its writing that I can't help but love it. And speaking of favourites, the bitter breakup song Kick to the Curb is also a ton of fun, proving once again that you don't have to be moody and dull to convey anger and frustration. And of course you have one of the best examples of solidarity that I've heard in a long time, 4-15-13, or the 15th of April 2013, which is about the Boston Marathon bombing that took place on the same day. The song takes the template of Alan Jackson's classic song, Where Were You, and makes it about a much smaller occurrence, which still carries a lot of weight. And while it doesn't quite have the gravitas of that song, it does come closer than I ever expected. And it's genuinely a great song. Nice job, guys. But with all that being said, is this album going to stick with me over the course of 2017? Well, no, I can't say that, because that's not what it's trying to be. But I will say I was quite surprised with the replay value on some of these songs. And while I can't see myself returning to this album a lot as a whole, individual tracks are bound to stick with me. So although I struggled with the score a little bit, I'm going to give it a strong 7 out of 10. Dropkick Murphys, you gave me more than I expected, and I definitely commend you for it. Well done, and good luck be with you. And until the next time, it's farewell and not goodbye. And as for the rest of you, thank you very much for watching. Please post in the comments what you thought of this album. And if there are any other albums coming out in the next month, please post them in the comments so I can check them out and possibly review them. Next up, we have my new top 10, which you guys picked, so please subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And until then, I'm Finn, and this is The Social Tune, signing off.